Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. To put a smile in your smoking, always buy Chesterfield. Made modern way with Accuray. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. through now, Mr. Dillon. What are you doing anyway? I'm nailing up a picture. Here, I'll show it to you. Ain't that a beautiful thing, Mr. Dillon? Uh, uh, It's got an awful lot of color, yeah, but what is it? Why, that's William Henry Harrison whipping them Indians at Tippecanoe. Oh. Well, this is the first time I knew he ever did it by himself. Well, now, what do you know? (laughs) I never noticed that. (laughs) But it sure is pretty, though, ain't it? Marshal Dillon? I right, come in, ma'am. So you're Matt Dillon. Uh, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? You can call me Amy, for one thing. My name's Amy Slater. All right, Amy. I'm 50 years old and I look 60. The Prairie done that. The Prairie and some other things, Marshal. Well, where are you from, Amy? I've been living in Wichita the last year. And I heard you were here, so I took the Santa Fe Railroad and I come to Dodge. Oh? Well, why'd you want to see me? I've been waiting a long time to see you. I've been living for it. But I'm about through living. What? I come here to die, Marshal. Oh, well, if you're sick, maybe Doc Adams can help you. I ain't sick. Then why are you talking about dying? I've only got enough money to last me about two days, Marshal. Well, if it's money you need, maybe I can help. Oh, you're going to help me. But not that way. Well, how? You're going to kill me, Marshal. What? I said you're going to kill me. Now, Amy, wait. I've been waiting, Marshal. A long time. Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Yes, put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder, B, better tasting, C, cooler smoking. Yes, a Chesterfield is always milder. Accuray controls your Chesterfield in the making, gives it a more even distribution of fine tobaccos that burn more evenly, smoke much milder. A Chesterfield is better tasting. An Accuray Chesterfield draws more easily. Let's you enjoy all the flavor. And the Chesterfield is cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. You enjoy cooler smoking. 
No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoke and just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield. They satisfy. The prairie does different things to different people. Some it gives knowledge to and strength. Others it breaks and leaves lost and twisted and wandering. Amy Slater was one of the lost. I let her go without trying to reason with her. I thought in a day or so I'd find her and buy her a ticket back to Wichita and that'd be the end of it. But it didn't work out that way. She found me first. It was the next morning, just before noon. Chester and I were crossing the plaza when I saw her standing about 30 yards away, holding a rifle. What's she up to, Mr. Dillon? She's aiming that rifle at me, Chester. You better get out of the way. She's crazy. Shoot her, Mr. Dillon. She'll kill you. I can't shoot a woman, Chester. Come back, Mr. Dillon. Next chapter will go through your heart, Marshal. I won't do you any good, Amy. I mean it. I'm not going to draw, Amy. You afraid to fight? Give me that rifle. All right, take it. I will. You're afraid. You're a coward. Why did you try to make me shoot you, Amy? What's this all about? You wouldn't fight. You weren't trying to kill me. How do you know I wasn't? You were shooting close. You were trying to make me draw. I'll destroy you yet, Marshal. By making me shoot a woman, is that it? Now, that'd be the end of me as a lawman, wouldn't it? It'd be the end of you as any kind of man. You must hate me an awful lot if you're willing to die for it. Why, Amy? What have I done to you? Amy? Ain't you going to arrest her, Mr. Dillon? You just going to let her walk off like that? Arresting her wouldn't do any good, Chester. After what she done? It didn't work, Chester. She's licked now. And I feel kind of sorry for her. This is really going to drive her crazy. Just look at the men lined up at that bar, Mr. Dillon. My, I wish I owned this saloon. Ah, cheap whiskey at fancy prices is always a good business, Chester. Well, I ain't getting none of my money. Oh, what did you come in here for? To play a little pharaoh. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yes, sir. I ain't squandering a nickel at that bar. Not me. <laughs> well, good luck, Chester. Thank you. Evening, Ma. How are you, Kitty? Sit down. Thank you. Ah, that looks like a busy night. <laughs> It'll get worse. Wait till some of those boys really get a skin for Well, I hope they play general. I've been shot at once today. I heard about that. Some old woman with a rifle. Yeah. Amy Slater. What's she after you for? I man? have many idea, Kitty. That she feels pretty strong about it. I guess she does. Anyway, her plan didn't work, so maybe that's the last I'll hear of her. <laughs> you don't give women enough credit, Matt. She'll think of something else. <laughs> well, I hope not. Why don't you throw her in jail? Oh, I'd look fine throwing an old woman in jail, wouldn't I? Especially one that's after me. You got a right to. Besides, when a woman gets to hating somebody, it's usually worse than when a man does. Women don't do things by halves. With them, it's all or nothing. Well, all I know about women is that uh, some of them are pretty and some aren't. You're lying. But I won't argue with you. <laughs> Good. Marshal Dillon. Matt. That's Amy. And she's got a six-gun. 
Stand up, Marshal. You better get out of the way, Kitty. Yeah, you better. Step out here, Marshal. What are you up to now, Amy? I want to show you how I can handle a six-gun. I want to show you what I can do with it. Throw the gun down, Amy. Not till I'm through with it. You can't fool me this time, Marshal. Throw it down, Amy. No. You shot me. You shot me. <laughs> Is she, Doc? Oh, she's about the same. She's asleep now. Now? You scared her half to death, man. Well, I had to shoot that gun out of her hand, Doc, another second, and she'd have killed me. Yeah, I guess she really was after you this time, wasn't she? What I don't understand is a woman brave enough to go gunning for a man fainting like well, that. Well, she's got a fever, Matt. She's not well. Oh? But what she's really suffering from is hysteria. There just isn't much I can do for that. Well, she can't go on like this. No, I suppose not. She'd probably be all right if she got over this business with you. She won't even say why she's after me, Doc. No, she won't. What are you going to do with her? You can't keep her here. Well, I can't throw her out in the street. And you told me she doesn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I got an idea. Yeah, well, what's that? You know Ma Smiley? Oh, of course I know Ma. She's been doing my laundry for years. Oh, she lives alone. Maybe, Maybe she'd like company. Amy could help her with the work, huh? Amy shouldn't do any work at all for a couple of weeks, Matt. Well, then I'll pay for her room and board. You'll pay for her room and board? So you're being awful good to a woman who just tried to kill you. Oh, I feel sorry for her, Doc. Oh, well, maybe Amy won't like the idea of you helping now, her. Now, don't you tell her. You Tell her you're doing it, huh? Mm, all right. Look, why don't you go see Ma right now, and I, I'll stay out of it. All right, I'll go then. Oh, 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 but there's one thing that you ought to keep in mind, Matt. Oh, what? Just because she didn't make it tonight doesn't mean Amy won't try to kill you again. This year, this easy way Give Chesterfields this year So bright and gay Wrapped and ready They're the best to buy Cartons of Chesterfields They satisfy This Christmas Give everyone Chesterfields Chesterfields are easy to give Because they come ready to give In a bright red special holiday carton That's wrapped in its own colorful Christmas ribbon Everyone enjoys Chesterfield's smoother, cooler smoking pleasure. So, to all your friends this year, say, Merry Christmas with cartons of Chesterfields. No wrapping, no tying. They're easy to give because they come ready to give. Chesterfields, in the bright red special holiday carton. Wrapped and ready, they're the best to buy. Cartons of Chesterfields, they satisfy. Doc talked to Ma Smiley that night, and the next day, Amy moved in with her. I didn't have to worry about any trouble for a while. Doc ordered her to bed, and he saw to it that she stayed there. But she never talked. She never told anybody why she was after me. A couple of weeks passed before Doc reported she was up and about again, and that she'd soon be able to go to work. At least I hoped it was work she'd be doing. Not gunning for me. A few days later, I found out. Chester and I were sitting in the office after dinner. Uh, Mr. Dillon, you remember that fellow Jeremy Cracker who used to live around here? Yeah, it'd be hard to forget him, Chester. I was thinking about the time he run a rusty nail into his foot. 
Right. <laughs> Remember how he went over at the Texas Trail and bought himself two pints of raw whiskey, and, and he went outside and filled his shoe with one pint and himself with the other and slopped around town that way for days till he got cured? <laughs> Why, my gracious, he like... He... Uh, hello, Amy. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Well, hello. It's all right, Marshal. I ain't got a gun. Uh, sit down, Amy. Uh, here, here, here's your chair. Thank you. How you feeling? Pretty good, Marshal. But I'm going to feel a lot better when I tell you what I come for. Oh. I'll say it's simple, Marshal. I've been wrong, hating you the way I have. It's done me more harm than you. I wanted to ruin you, but it's near ruined me instead. You understand? Well, what's changed your mind, Amy? Doc. Doc? He took it on himself to tell me. Figured I ought to know. Told me how you've been paying for my keep with my smiley, and after all I tried to do to you... Well, you needed help, Amy. I, I don't bear grudges. I do. At least I have till now. I want to pay you back, Marshal. Now, Amy, there's no need to repay me anything. I've got to. For my own sake, I've got to. But I don't mean money. I've got no money. Well, what do you mean? Jim Band had a partner, Marshal. Jim Band? Dakota Territory, you remember. Oh, yeah, a long time ago. Jim Band tried to shoot me. He hit me, but I killed him. That's right. Amy, what's your name? I'm his sister, Marshal. Ah, uh, I see. Jim's partner's name was Emmett Gold. Yeah, I remember him. I never saw him after the shooting. Until today. Till today? About a half hour ago. He was walking into the Texas Trail... He's come to Dodge after you, Marshal. I know he has. He must have heard you was here somehow, and he's come to kill you. After all these years, huh? I didn't forget, did I? No. It's not easy to warn you about him, Marshal. But like I say, I'm doing it for my own sake. I won't be troubled no more now. I've done what's right. Yeah. We're even now, ain't we? You and me. Yeah, we're even, Amy. And I'm mighty happy about it. You just gonna walk in on this fellow, Mr. Dillon? Might as well get it over with, Chester. You stay out of the way, now. Yes, sir. Emmett Gold? Hello, Dylan. Uh, you remember me? Sure I do. You're your marshal now. Yeah, that's right. Been a long time. Mm-hmm. We was never friendly, Marshal. No. And what do you want? What are you doing in Dodge, Gold? I'm riding through. Headed for Colorado. As soon as I finish his drink. Is that all? That's all. What do you think I'm doing here? Looking for me. Looking for you? What for? I shot Jim Band, didn't I? It was a fair fight. Yeah, of course it was. You got shot too, didn't you? I didn't get killed. Wait a minute, Marshal. You think I'm after you for killing Jim Band, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, if that don't beat all. What? You remember where that fight happened? I was on the prairie somewhere. And Jim's bullet knocked you out. When you come to again, we was gone, wasn't we? Well, you packed him off and buried him. No, I didn't. I didn't bury him. He wasn't dead. You didn't kill him. He changed his name, went out to Virginia City. 
That's where he got killed in a brawl with the law about two years ago. So long, Marshal. Well, I never heard anything like that in my whole life, Mr. Dillon. No. You think it's true? Oh, he'd have no reason to lie, Chester. Well, what's Amy going to think? She isn't going to know, Chester. What? Why not? Amy did a big thing for herself, telling me about gold being here. But it was all useless. No. Not unless we tell her it was. And I wouldn't spoil what Amy's done for anything. <laughs> with our star, William Conrad. Put a smile in your smoking. It's as easy as ABC, because Chesterfields made with Accuray are A, always milder. Smoke much milder. Burn evenly. B, better tasting. Draw more easily. You enjoy more flavor. C, cooler smoking. 14% more perfectly packed than cigarettes made without Accuray. No hot spots. No hard draw. So always buy Chesterfields. Remember, an Accuray Chesterfield is always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. You know, on the frontier, feed for stock was scarce during the long winter months. And on our next gun smoke, a man dies because of a load of hay. So, until then, good night. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg and Harry Bartell. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Christmas seals give your cards and packages that holiday look. Help fight tuberculosis. Buy and use Christmas seals. Make Christmas their red letter day, their L&M red letter day. Give them the Christmas cards and full of America's best. Yes, give L&M's on Christmas Day to friends who smoke the builder way. L&M's got everything, the gift for Christmas Day. This is it. For Christmas... L and M filters and the handsome Christmas carton. No fuss with ribbons or paper. It's all wrapped and ready to give. This Christmas, give L and M Christmas cartons. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in... Gunsmoke.